Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to work through an example of how to find factored form from a graph of a quadratic function. So our task is to write a formula for the quadratic function that is graphed below. So here's a graph of a parabola, let's call the function f. So the process we're going to do is quite similar to how we found a vertex form from a graph, but in this case we're going to use factored form. And the reason I know to use factored form is that it's hard for me to tell what the vertex is. So maybe if we had graphed this in Desmos and we had access to the graph, we could click on that vertex and find the specific value. But when I'm just handed the graph like this, I don't really know what the vertex is. So instead, I want to use factored form because I can pretty clearly see what the horizontal intercepts are. So we're going to use the form f of x equals a times x minus r times x minus s. And in factored form, which is this form here, the r and the s are our horizontal intercepts. So looking at the graph, I can see our horizontal intercepts are x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. Let's let r be the negative 1 and s be the 2. So we can take these values and put them into the formula. So I have f of x equals a, we'll still need to find a, but then I have x minus a negative 1 times x minus 2. So I've replaced r and s with my horizontal intercepts. Then I might rewrite the minus a negative as a plus, so I'll write a times x plus 1 times x minus 2. So we're super close, we have everything except the a value. So this is where this process is similar to what we did for vertex form. So we're going to substitute in a point that we know on the graph and then solve to find a. So a is some value, we just don't know what it is yet. So we wanna take a point that we can see on the graph and use it to help us find it. So you could choose any point you can clearly see. For me, I think the closest one is actually 5, 12. You could maybe do negative 4, 12, but I'll stick with 5, 12. So 5, 12 corresponds to an x value of 5 and an output, an f of x value of 12. So we're going to substitute this into our formula and then solve for a. So if we start with f of x equals a times x plus 1 times x minus 2, I'll replace f of x with 12, I'll leave a alone, and then I have 5 plus 1 times 5 minus 2. Here I'm replacing the x with 5. Now we have an equation that only has one unknown, and so we can solve for a. So a is the only variable left. We can now simplify this and solve to find what a is. Okay, so let's go through that. On the left-hand side, I still have 12. It's equal to a times 6 times 3. All right, so 6 times 3 is 18. That means I have 12 equals a times 18. And now I just want to solve for a by getting it alone on one side of the equation. So I will divide both sides by 18. So I have 12 over 18 equals a times 18 over 18. When I get that 18 over 18, that's just 1. Basically, I've undone that multiplication by dividing. And so I'm left with 12 over 18 is a, and 12 over 18 simplifies to 2 thirds. So my a value is 12 over 18, which is 2 thirds. Okay, so we have my a value, it's two thirds. We just had to go through that process. Might take you a little bit, you can use your calculator, whatever you need, but the main idea is that we're substituting in a point and then solving for a. So from this, we get our final answer. My function f of x is equal to two thirds, that's my a value, times x plus one times x minus two. And there we go, that's it. So to find factored form from a graph, we look at the horizontal intercepts, we put them in the formula for r and s, then we substitute in a point that we know on the graph and solve for a. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.